The Lord be with you. Happy Mother's Day. We, um, our theme today is making disciples, and we'll talk about uh, Mother's Day too. We have um, a Mother's Day litany that we'll do instead of the psalm today. Our um, sermon text will start with um, the Great Commission. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness found on page 3. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who calls us beloved children, who gathers us into one flock, who guides us into all truth. Let us confess our sins, trusting that God will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Faithful and just God, we confess that we are captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We have not loved our <coughs> sisters and brothers as you have first loved us. Forgive us, God of mercy. Let your Holy Spirit work in us to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the abundant life given in Christ our risen Lord. Amen. And this is love. Not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent the Son to atone for our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, I announce to you that your sins are forgiven. Let the perfect love of God cast out fear, fill you with joy, and inspire you to live for others. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that, loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from Acts. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers had come with Peter, were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. A Mother's Day Litany. Lord, on this day, set aside to honor and remember mothers, we give you thanks for our mothers. We are grateful that you chose to give us life through them and that they received the gift of life from your hands and gave it to us. Thank you for the sacrifices they made in carrying us and giving us birth. We thank you for the women who raised us, who were our mothers in childhood, whether birth mom, adopted mom, older sister, aunt, grandmother, stepmother, or someone else. We thank you for those women who held us and fed us, who cared for us and kissed away our pain. We pray that our lives may reflect the love they showed us and that they would be pleased to be called our moms. We pray for older moms whose children are grown. Grant them joy and satisfaction for a job well done. We pray for new moms experiencing changes they could not predict. Grant them rest and peace as they trust. We pray for pregnant women who will soon be moms. We pray for moms who face the demands of single parenthood. 
We pray for moms who enjoy financial abundance. We pray for moms who are raising their children in poverty. We pray for stepmoms. We pray for moms who are separated from their children. We pray for moms in marriages that are in crisis. We pray for moms who have lost children. We pray for moms who gave up their children for adoption. We pray for a <clears throat> we pray for adoptive mothers. We pray for girls and women who think about me being moms. We pray for all women who have assumed the mother's role in a child's life. We pray for those people present who are grieving the loss of their mother in the past year. Lord, we thank you for the gift of motherhood. We thank you for the many examples of faithful mothers in Scripture, like Sarah, Hannah, Elizabeth, and Lois. We are mindful this day of all these women, and especially Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had the courage and faith to say yes to your calling. May these women gathered here today emulate these examples of faith, and may they model for all the rest of us what it means to be your disciple. Bless them on this special day. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. A reading from 1 John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I would like to invite the children to come forward.
How, how many of you have pets at home? A few of you? Well, for the next few weeks, we have four pets at home. Oh, you just found pets in your backyard? That's pretty neat. Okay, what's the problem with pets? By the way, here's some pictures of pets. Aren't those cute, adorable puppies? How about this one? Our pets aren't quite this beautiful, but we have... Yes, we have only two dogs and two cats right now. How do they get along? Sometimes not very well. We're taking care of our oldest daughter and her family are moving, and they sold their house, but they can't move into their new house for a few weeks. So they said, can you take care of the dog? So we've got this big dog, big long legs. Now, let's get back to what's the problem with having a dog? Emerson, <laughs> yes, they can mess up the house, can't they? Well, the dog that we're taking care of is pretty good about that. doesn't go in the house, but it'll go out in the backyard and get all muddy. That's a she, by the way. And she'll come in and track that mud all over the house. I had, when I went home for lunch yesterday afternoon, I had to mop the entire kitchen floor. It was such a mess. That's the problem with pets. You have to take care of them. Are pets fun? A dog named Mitzi. That's a nice dog. That's a nice name. They're fun, yeah. They're fun to have around and they do things with you and they always love you. Don't they? Yeah. Well, we're talking about discipleship today. And one of the things about discipleship, it requires some work. Jesus tells us to love people, even when they're hard to love. Okay, that's probably the hardest thing. I know Cal's uh, playing with his feet is interesting, but look at me. <laughs> so being a disciple is sometimes a lot of work. Are there good things about being a disciple? You know what the good things are? We have a sense of purpose. We have a sense that God is living in us and living through us. And there's great joys. And God is in heaven too. Yes. And Jesus. There you go. In heaven, but with us at the same time. Isn't that something? So, I want you to understand pets are fun, work is required. When we got our dog, you know what Mrs. Freeberg said to me? You better feed that dog and water that dog being a disciple is a lot of work too. But there's joys in being a disciple. Okay, let us pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he called us and asked us to be disciples. Help us to follow him. Deny ourselves and be filled with his joy. In his name we pray. Amen. You may go back to your seats.
Happy Mother's Day. We were in Minnesota this week, got back Friday night sometime, and um, spent some time with Nick's mother. Uh, Mother-in-laws are often difficult people, and this Nick's mother is, is no exception. Uh, but, but I have grown to really love Anne. Here's why Anne is a, 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 is a challenge. Anne tells you what's on her mind. And sometimes that, 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 that little fence we put up to keep from, uh, I suppose, being too brash or wounded people, Anne doesn't have that fence. <laughs> so she, uh, every single time we see her, she does not like the names of our grandchildren. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with Lincoln, but Anne thinks it's terrible. Miles, she thinks is terrible. And let, she just goes on and on about August. Who would name their child after a month on the calendar? And we t tell her about people who are named April and June and I have fun with Anne and as I say, I've grown to love her. Uh, oh, by the way, Anne, Anne said, well, my mother had this philosophy, find a name in the Bible and name your child. Uh, and we said, well, Anne, what about your son, Ray. Now it's Raymond, R-A-M-O-N, because he was named after a movie star. But Ed just doesn't get it. <laughs> Here's my point. The real miracle, we actually saw a miracle. And with Anne. And it happened to be Ray. Now, Ray was a typical uh, business, a stereotypical, we could say, business person, hard-nosed, matter of fact. He took over the family business and immediately fired his father and, uh, and, and all that. And uh, most of my conversations with him were not pleasant because he spent a lot of time just talking about himself and how much better he was than everybody else. But the real miracle, and we had always complained that Ray lives in Minnesota, why doesn't he spend more time with his mother? Well, on Wednesday, Ray said, hey, I'll meet you at Mom's and all of us will go out to eat. And we got there, and what should we see? But Ray on his hands and knees, washing his mother's feet. And then he wiped them off, <clears throat> let them dry for a little bit, got some lotion and rubbed lotion on her feet and legs, let that dry a little bit, put on her socks and put on her shoes. And Anne was just beaming. Look at my dear son, my dear son Ray, who has always been her favorite anyway, but she was beaming. I describe that as a miracle. Because, and actually, when we went out to lunch, I, I, the, the whole experience with Ray was a pleasant experience. Something had happened to him. And now we come to discipleship. The first word in discipleship is Jesus says to us, deny yourself. Deny yourself. Notice in our prayers, as soon as I said, deny yourself, everyone must have thought I made a mistake because he didn't repeat after me. 
Isn't that the part of discipleship that we hate? We hear Jesus say that, and we go, oh, Jesus, please. That's not what I want to hear. But Jesus says, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. What I saw in Ray was this process of denying himself. It was changing him. He was a changed person. All through loving his mother. Robin Moss offers this insight. Uh, talking about how the love we Christians are supposed to have is supposed to be a cruciform love, a cross-shaped love. And she says, few, if any of us, will be called to martyrdom, but all of us are called to a series of little deaths in the form of invitations to restrain or deny self. The sending of God by God was the sending of love, a crucified love, willing to lay down its life for friends and enemies alike. Your mission and mine, which we can only perform insofar as we are in communion with God and with one another, is to submit out of love for one another to countless daily little deaths until we have yielded every least and last remnant of self to the purpose of Christ. Discipleship. Christ calling us. Deny yourself. You want to find your life? Lose it. Deny yourself. And we go through little daily deaths so that the life of God in Christ can live in us. And those deaths sometimes are so, so hard. But when we do die, those little deaths, the result is so so good. Isn't it interesting that uh, marriage, I tell people all the time when they come to me and want to be married, I tell them that this is going to be, if you take it seriously, the greatest event to shape and change you. Notice when we give marriage vows, we never say, I vow to love you as long as you make me happy. Never say anything like that. It's countercultural what we say in our wedding vows. I promise to love you, respect you, cherish you. The vows aren't saying or expecting anything in return. Two people pledging their lives to one another. And when two people take that seriously, well, even when you don't take it seriously, God is there. And God, the great teacher, will shape you. Discipleship. Great joy in life requires these little deaths every day. The whole joy is that God in Christ becomes more and more alive in us. Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. Judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of bodies, and the life of all creatures. Amen. Confident that the resurrection of Christ has defeated sin and death, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all people in need. God of love, your church is the community of those who believe that Jesus is the Christ, and you have taught us that we have been born of God. Help us to show your love for you by loving your children and thus fulfilling Christ's command. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. On this Mother's Day weekend, we celebrate and thank you for mothers. We remember all parents and caregivers as they teach their children to know and love you. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. All creation witnesses to your goodness, O God. The sea and the lands, the rivers and hills ring out with joy before you. Bless and protect this world with all its fragility. Our hearts are broken by the helicopter crash in Pakistan, which took the lives of the ambassadors of Norway and the Philippines, among others. We send love to the people of Oklahoma, where severe storms and tornadoes took the life of one and injured 12. We ache together for Baltimore and other American cities, where unrest and distrust between police and black citizens persist. We pray for your peace in this world. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Help us to grow as your disciples, gracious God, by keeping your commandments, by abiding in your love. Bless this community with such faithfulness that your joy may be in us and that our joy may be complete. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. We hear our prayers for our friends and all who suffer. We remember especially John Burke, Gary Coffey, Mary Lou Cordero, Cliff Dykeman, Dennis Edwards, Judy Elliott, Dustin Jones, Jim Lampy, Scotty Inman, Sally Hollingshad, Ellen Lassant, Ellen Malcolm, Verdeen Miller, Jeff Morris, Duran Murphy, Ruth Pipcorn, John Reynolds, Jan Snath, Wayne Sproul, and Joe Umland. Are there any others? We entrust to your never-failing victory those who have died. Comfort those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Richard La Follette and of Susie Barr. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Holy God, by the death and resurrection of your Son, you have granted new life, abundant renewal, and salvation. Hear our prayers for the sake of the one who has set us free, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are now going to have a temple talk on discipleship. Thank you, Chris. Chris Moss, our interim um, youth and family person. Just keep talking. Here we go. There you go. I'll try to talk. Oh, there we go. Hey, how about that? Um, happy to stand here before you this morning as we continue our... Yeah, of course, today we're... Just don't move, Chris. 
Is that better? There we go. Go like that. This, this must, be, must be a touchy microphone. Um, happy to stand here before you this morning as we continue our capital campaign and talk about our uh, celebrating our mission here at Messiah. And of course, this week we're talking about celebrating making disciples. And so I've prepared a few notes here I'd like to read with you this morning. Depending on whom you ask, you'll find a wide variety of interpretation regarding what it actually means to make disciples. Many churches today understand it as a command to evangelize the world. And while there is certainly an evangelistic aspect to Christ's command, his instructions go beyond spreading the gospel. When translated from its original text, making disciples carries more meaning than simply converting, uh, accumulating converts. It communicates the idea of the learning believer, someone who is growing in faith and their love for the Lord. Jesus' words emphasize not the moment of salvation, but the lifetime of sanctification that follows. For this reason, we continue to celebrate mission during this capital campaign. So what does that mean for us, Messiah, to make disciples? What does it currently look like? In some ways, it looks very traditional. We have our weekly Sunday school programs for all ages. We have multiple weekly opportunities for Bible studies. We have a milestone program consisting of newborns, First Communion, our confirmation students. The women of the ELCA meet monthly to share Christ's love with the community of women. It also looks somewhat non-traditional. Men's Pub Theology and Women's Wine, Wit, and Wisdom both meet monthly to host a number of people, both members and non-members, outside the four walls of this church. Weekly, our men's softball team is working to build relationships with each other and our community. What many not, uh, may not realize is that our softball team alone last year brought four new members to the church. The ministries of making disciples are so important to the life and the future of here at Messiah, but we have to have a place to come back to. We have to have a place that people feel comfortable and welcome, and that place is Messiah. And with your continued support, that place will always be Messiah. So as we continue on this capital campaign journey, remember that your pledge goes far beyond paying for brick and mortar. You're affecting the change in the lives of the people that you may not even met yet people that will soon depend on Messiah as their place to grow in their faith. And to me, that's celebrating our mission. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. They never applaud for my sermons. <laughs> By the way, if you want to hear the other half of my sermon, I guess you had to be here last night. I cut my sermon short today, but maybe you didn't notice. So that's fine. Please stand. cup of blessing is shared within our midst. May we share the presence of As the grains of wheat once scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become our bread. So may all your people from all kinds of earth be gathered into let us pray. Blessed are The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We give you thanks for Jesus who, living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. This is the second Sunday of the month. Therefore, we commune via intinction. You will receive the bread or a wafer in your hand. Hold it until the chalice comes along and dip or untinct it into the wine. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Giving God, we give you thanks for nourishing us with the bread of heaven and the wine of love, Jesus, our risen Savior. As you send us into the world, guard us from the power of evil. Keep us in unity with all your people, and by your Spirit, move us to testify to your grace in our words and actions through Christ our Lord. You will notice in the back, there are booths set up, if, and uh, they are there to uh, let you know all the different discipling activities that are going on that you can either sign up for or uh, ask somebody about uh, them and get more information to see if you might want to be involved in any of those. Of course, the reason we're doing this, uh, we're also at the same time having our capital funds appeal. And so we're trying to say it's not only about money. Our building is our, it houses our mission and ministry here. So it's about mission. And uh, uh, you'll continue to hear more about that in the next few weeks. Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about, now and forever. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources, and ministry, offer healing and care to all the Go in peace, share the good news. Hallelujah! <laughs>